Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first video of Dunuary. D Dune by Frank Herbert. It's a book. Uh, this is my first video in a series of three. We're going to be doing three videos about this one story. Um, it requires that much complexity. Look at its thick pages. It's clearly a book for, a ge for geniuses only, or so I was led to believe um, at the amount of people who I talked to about um, when I said I'm going to be reading Dune and they said, well, that book's it's huge. It's it's unreadable. <laughs> um, they're not correct. There's many people that have read this book uh, throughout the years. Uh, this is the 50th anniversary edition of Dune that I'm holding. I don't know if it says that. It does. It does say that right right there, but you can't really see it. Um, so let's talk about this book. This first video is going to be obviously from the title, my spoiler-free review of Dune, uh, having just uh, finished reading it basically. Um, so Dune, what is it about? Well if you read the blurb, uh, which I don't recommend, uh, it will tell you what happens in about this much of the book. Um, yeah, the, the, the back of the book is a uh, massive uh, spoilers uh, from, from a time when spoilers were not really a thing. Uh, the internet has borne out. Um, so basically, this, the basic premise of this book is it's a science fiction novel set in a uh, sort of futuristic feudal society um, where an emperor rules the land uh, and he has all of these different minor... Uh, sort of houses and great houses underneath them. Imagine something akin to Game of Thrones in terms of the political structure. Um, so what this is about is uh, two warring houses, House Atreides uh, and House Harkonnen, uh, who have been having a feud for a long time and then the Emperor um, gets involved in this and they he teams up with the Harkonnens to bring down the Atreides family um, and it all centres around this planet that is informally known as Dune, um, the planet Arrakis which is the home of a uh, valuable spice which is essentially a drug um, which enables uh, certain people to uh, manipulate uh, the, their mind in order to correctly navigate spaceships so essentially this is a random drug uh, that is only found on this one planet that allows people to do space travel um, which makes it in a spacefaring society incredibly valuable um, so there's a whole scheme going on I won't spoil it but um, basically it follows the the story of Paul Atreides who is the heir to the uh, Atreides family as he navigates these schemes uh, and rises up to be a leader in his own right but what more of that I will save for the spoilery discussions um, so let's talk about the book shall we I'm going to put it down it's heavy um, <laughs> so Dune um, let's talk about it first of all what did I think um, I thought it was fucking amazing obviously uh, it's a true science fiction masterpiece um like it's one of those cornerstones like uh, lord of the rings is for fantasy dune is uh, for the space opera um and when i say space opera i do mean space opera uh, because they're so much of the writing um of the characters and the dialogue is so um it's almost shakespearean in how melodramatic it all is um, and how exaggerated everything is um, all, all these families and their rituals and customs and their weird behaviors um, which uh, is very interesting to read about um, it's a it's it's very hard to describe it's very theatrical um, in its presentation um, which I enjoyed a lot um, the chapters are um, broken up there's three parts of the book which basically tell the story of uh, Paul's journey through uh, Dune and the events that happen there um, which are all all of the uh, sort of the little chapter breaks are presented to you with a excerpt from writing from someone called Princess Irulan um, who becomes a very very minor character uh, i guess later on um but it's um it's a very 
elegant way of presenting this uh, complex backstory and history um, to a world where you don't really have it. Um, and you get uh, sort of glimpses of how things will happen after the story um, from those chapter headings. Like it will talk about uh, this guy called Muad'Dib. Um, like as all of them are like, all of them are excerpts and writings about this figure called Muad'Dib. And as you go along, you start realizing who Muad'Dib is and why that's important and what is going on there. Um, so there's a lot of layers um, through the writing where um, like you'll see people talking about things that have happened or maybe they haven't happened yet um, because there's all very fine machinations going on um, across generations like all of the events that are happening in Dune are like a, a melting pot of all of these sort of centuries long schemes by all these different people um, and it's very confusing to try and explain uh, in a straightforward way <laughs> um, but it's very interesting to read about and once you sort of get your head around it in the book like the the world opens up to you, which is uh, interesting because it sort of mirrors Paul's journey itself. Um, so let's just talk about the basic five points that I normally go into. Um, first of all, I enjoyed it. Superb uh, book. Uh, one star there. Good, good job. Um, so the plot, um, the plot is very it's there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's, so in talking about the plot, it's really kind of difficult because so much of the story is not based on the events that happen, but rather people's emotions and feelings and internal schemes um, that saying the plot is something amazing is incorrect. Um, I think the plot is serviceable for what it's trying to do. Um, but it's not like a, it's very trope heavy, um, but it does explore the tropes um, thematically. So I'm okay with that. Um, it's very, you know, chosen one tropes and like you're pretty much your standard hero's journey kind of affair. Um, prophecies and all of that stuff is there. Um, so it's very trope laden, um, but it's all explored in a very interesting way, which I think will it counteracts that tropiness like you you expect the tropes like you see the tropes and you're like, okay i recognize what's going on here and then it sort of peels away that top layer of trope and then you realize that there's a deeper reason for all of those things being there um which is something that i've not seen many other places before um and is really uh unique i think to dune um so the writing style um it's yeah it's very I don't know really how to describe uh, Frank Herbert's writing style, but it's very, um, it's very direct. Uh, there's a lot of telling instead of showing, which I think people might not like, um, but I think it's, it adds a layer of interest. Um, there's a constant sense of dramatic irony throughout all of the work, because you'll get these moments where um, two people are having a conversation and trying to figure out each other's motivations, but because it's written from an omniscient, perspective um you get this you get both of their internal monologues so you have these things where it's like oh i don't know what he's up to um maybe i should like do something about it and then he's like oh in his head he's like oh no she's on to me um i need to backtrack and save face and then you're sitting there like no <laughs> like i can see what the truth of it um and you're you're both missing the point um and it's that's really interesting and it, it carries through the whole book um there's a lot of um interesting concepts explored uh, in the writing that I, I think are very good so there's a star there um plotting can have a star as well i'm feeling generous today so we'll give it three stars the pacing i did have an issue with um it is a longer book and it does one of these things that is just a personal gripe to me um which is when you have uh, a story about an adventure or traveling across something there's just so much um dedicated to the mechanics of surviving um there's like a huge section and i get 
I get why this exists in books, but it always just annoys me when it happens because it's the same as the the Eye of the Wild, Wheel of Time stuff, um, where there was that section of random Matt travelling across the nation and just doing that for a while. Um, it happens in this where uh, Paul and his mother are travelling across the desert for a bit, just the two, and it's there's not really any all of that scheming stuff and the prophecy stuff and all that sort of put on the back burner so we can have sort of a hundred pages of them walking across some sand which it just doesn't do it for me um so i can't give a star to pacing uh just because that i feel that bogged the story down and probably didn't need to be there um i understand why it was there but i feel it could have been a smaller focus um, it didn't need to be as long as it was. Um, so yeah, there's that. The characters, um, I think, were really good. As a, there, It's all very Shakespearean um, in terms of the... There's no shades of grey. Like, it's there's no Game of Thrones style um, sympathy here for any villains. Uh, it's said to you pretty much right at the start that the Atreides are the good guys and the Harkonnens are the bad guys. Um, and this is evidenced time and time again throughout the story um you there's no one no one's motivations are hidden from you as the reader um even though they do have complex hidden secrets um because it's in an omniscient style so you know you know the truth of it basically of what's going on at all times with the characters which does take away some of the um, mystery around all of them but it doesn't subtract from the complexity in fact I would say it enhances the complexity of a lot of the characters um, which is great as you really get a feel for all of their different motivations and you can see why they're doing things you just obviously you know that sometimes people are just doing things to be a cunt uh, which is the case uh, in some instances in this book um, so characters we can give a star to as well um, so I think we've covered all the bases um, there. I can't think of anything else really that needs addressing. So read this book. Basically, if you're a science fiction fan, um, if you're a fan of um, intrigue and heroic stories and like if you like a good Shakespeare tale, um, you'll probably really like Dune. Um, if you're into something that's much more action packed and if you're like, oh, I want to see a story about cool guys fighting with sandworms, you know, this isn't the book for you. Um, it's got some of that in it, but it's not the book for you. Um, it's much more um, involved and, yeah, it's much more involved and mapped out. Um, and if you can take the time to read it slowly, as I as I did, um, you can really sort of mull over the different reasons why things are happening and the different layers and how it relates to our own life. And those are some of the things I'm going to talk about in my next video anyway, which is going to be a uh, spoilery discussion uh, of Dune. Um, so if you haven't read the book, go out and do it if it sounds interesting. And I will see you for the next video. Bye.